In this video, we will be creating the garden bench project. We're going to first start by creating the seat frame assembly. The seat frame is composed of six different parts. There are two seat frame short side pieces, two seat frame long side pieces, and two lumber support brackets. To create the seat frame short side components, we will be using 2 inch by 2 inch by 14 gauge square tubing. These pieces need to be cut in the shape of a trapezoid and each end needs to be 45 degrees with a total length of 20 inches. With the horizontal bandsaw set up at 45 degrees, we're going to begin by taking just a small amount of material off so we can have that 45 degree angle on one side. This cut could also be made on a miter saw with a metal cutting blade. For the second cut, we're going to keep the saw at the same angle, but rotate our material 180 degrees. Our overall length is 20 inches, and we will be identifying that on our square tubing. Using a square, I'm going to extend my line and identify my angle of cut so I don't get confused when I'm lining it up in the saw. And after clamping it securely, we can make our cut. Since we need two of these pieces, we can use our existing cut as our first cut for our next piece. Rotate our material 180 degrees. Slide it down, measure, mark, and cut. If we place our pieces back to back, they should be identically the same length. The next pieces that we are going to make are the seat frame long side. These pieces are also 2 inches by 2 inches by 14 gauge square tubing. They are also in the shape of a trapezoid with a 45 degree angle at each end. The only difference with this piece compared to the previous piece is that these measure a length of 48 inches. I'm following the exact same procedures for cutting this piece that I did the previous piece, and that is my previous cut is used as my first end. I measure, marking, and cutting. I'm rotating the material 180 degrees, measuring, marking, and cutting. After cutting two of those, we can also double check that they are the exact same length. The last two pieces that we need to make for the seat frame is the lumber support bracket. These are the pieces of flat bar that the boards will actually sit on and the boards will be mounted to. The measurements of the lumber support bracket is 1 8 of an inch thick by 1 inch wide by 44 inches long. After measuring and marking our flat bar at 44 inches, the iron worker makes quick work of cutting these to our desired measurement. And you always want to double check to make sure that they are the same length. The last thing that we need to do to prep our pieces to be ready to assemble this seat frame is lay out and drill all of the hole locations for where those seat boards will be attached to our lumber support bracket. 
Now it is only necessary for me to lay out these measurements on one piece and then I can stack all of my pieces together and drill them at the same time. I have my flat stock clamped in a vise in the drill press and it is set to drill in the center of my one inch flat stock. I have my identified marks at each hole location. I have also installed a locking C-clamp so that my pieces don't shift around on each other as I'm working on this piece. I'm going to be using a number 13 drill bit which is about 7 30 seconds of an inch. Although the seat support only calls for two of these lumber support brackets, we will also be making an additional two brackets for our backrest. If you want to save a little bit of time, you can make all four of these brackets at the same time and drill them all at the same time as well. All of our seat rest pieces have been made and we are ready to prep them for welding. Cutting these pieces on the bandsaw has a tendency to leave little burrs and irregularities in the metal. This could affect the way our pieces fit together when we get ready to weld. So we're going to take a metal file and create a very small chamfer around the outside edge of each of these pieces and eliminate all of those burrs. I have created a jig to help me line up all of my pieces and make sure that they don't shift on me while I'm tack welding them together. I have designed this jig to accommodate all four assemblies to help me ensure that everything is lined up for this project. If all of your pieces have been measured and cut correctly, all of the joints should fit up correctly as well. And at this point we are ready to tack up our seat frame. We're not going to install the lumber support brackets just yet. We're going to get everything welded on the outside of the frame and then add those later. Once it's tacked we can move this over to our primary welding area. Our goal is to seal up the entire joint all the way around. We're going to be MIG welding the top, the bottom, and the inside edge. To seal up the outside edge, we're going to be using an oxyacetylene setup. This will just help us get a little better control since it's pretty thin on these outside edges. The hope is that we can do this entire run without any filler rod but I do have some filler rod just in case I burn through. Once we have welded all the way around each of the joints of our seat frame components, we can grind down the welds that will be seen and clean up each joint so it looks a little nicer. After grinding, we can come back with a flap disc and polish it up a little bit. We can also clean up the outside corner. The goal is to clean it up and not damage the surface. And when everything is cleaned up, it should be looking pretty nice. The back rest is the second assembly that we need to create. This is also composed of six different pieces. We will need one back rest short side on the left one backrest short side on the right, one backrest long side on the top, one backrest long side on the bottom, and two of our lumber support brackets so that we have something to mount the wood to. The first piece that we'll be creating is the backrest long side top. Now this piece is identical to our seat frame long side in that it is a trapezoid. We have 45 degree angles at both ends 
and we have a total length of 48 inches. To make this cut, I will be using the exact same procedures that I did on the seat frame long side. This is also that two inch by two inch by 14 gauge material. The next piece that I will be making is the back rest long side bottom. This is a two inch by two inch by 14 gauge material. It has a length of 44 inches and each end is cut square at a 90 degree angle. After measuring and marking my material to 44 inches in length, I am using a horizontal bandsaw to create my 90 degree angle cuts. This type of cut could also be made on a miter saw with a metal cutting blade. The next two pieces that we're going to cut are the most difficult pieces to cut on this project. We have the back rest short side left and back rest short side right. If we take a look at the back rest short side left, this is two inch by two inch by 14 gauge square tubing. It is a total length of 23 and a half inches. There is a 75 degree angle on one side and a 45 degree angle on the other side but between cuts, this piece needs to be rotated 90 degrees because those angled cuts are not made on the same side. I have my horizontal bandsaw set up at 45 degrees and that will be the first cut that I'm going to make. I then have my cold saw set up at 75 degrees and I have transferred my material over to the cold saw. Looking at my original drawing, the total length is 23 and a half inches. So I'm going to identify my 23 and a half inch measurement. And by using a combination square, I'm going to extend that mark and transfer that mark onto the adjacent side by rotating the material 90 degrees. After having rotated my material 90 degrees, I can refer to my drawing and visualize each of the different views onto my material. So if I take a look at the front side view and correspond that to the front side of my material, I can see that my 45 degree angle lines up on the right side and the left side needs to be cut towards me. If I take a look at the top view of my drawing and visualize that onto my material, I can see that the slanted edge going away from me or that 45 degree angle is on the right side. My 75 degree angle is on the left side and my saw head is oriented in the same direction as that 75 degree angle that I need to cut. And just to make sure I don't get confused, I'm going to draw a line in the direction that my cut needs to go so that when I'm lining up my saw, if something isn't quite right, I know to double check things before I make my cut. Now the backrest short side right piece is identical in length identical with the type of angles that we're going to be cutting and identical with the type of material. The difference is we need to rotate the material 90 degrees the other way between cuts because we need to have this piece be a mirror image of the other piece. And after cutting that other side, we can roughly lay out our pieces and just double check to make sure all the angles are cut in the correct direction. Cutting all of these pieces on the bandsaw and the cold saw can leave 
small burrs of metal on your material. We want to make sure there is a tight fit up when we tack weld these. So we're going to take a metal file and clean up all of the outside edges. Using our jig, we can orient all of our pieces in place for the backrest. Prior to tack welding, you'll want to double check that the slant or that 75 degree angle is going in the same direction. Otherwise, you'll run into problems down the road. Just as we did for our first assembly, we can tack weld our second assembly components in place. We're going to leave off that lumber support piece for now. We'll add that at a later time. But again, we're using two small tacks at each joint location to temporarily hold this together. And we're going to repeat the same procedures for welding this together as we did on the seat frame. And much like we did with the seat frame, we will oxyacetylene the outside corners. When all of the joints have been welded, we can hit it with the grinder. And then we can finish it up with the flap disc. Once it is all cleaned up, it should be looking pretty good and we can move on to our third and fourth assembly. The third and fourth assemblies consist of the front leg and the armrest for both the right side and the left side of our project. We will need two front leg pieces and two armrest pieces. If we take a look at our front leg pieces, these are two inch by two inch by 14 gauge square tubing. It needs to be a total length of 27 inches and there is a square 90 degree cut on either end. Assuming our first end is at 90 degrees, we can measure, mark, and then cut our piece on the horizontal bandsaw. The armrest pieces will be made out of 2 inch by 4 inch by 14 gauge rectangular tubing. Each end is cut square at 90 degrees and it has a total length of 21 and 1 fourth inches. Assuming our first end is already cut square, we can measure, mark, and then cut our pieces using the horizontal bandsaw. Once our cuts are complete, we can double check that they are both at the exact same measurement and then we're going to file the burrs. If we take a look back at our original schematic and we focus in on the connection point between the front leg and the armrest, we can see that we need the armrest to overhang over the front leg by one and one fourth inches. By placing the pieces in the jig perpendicular to each other, we can create that one and one fourth inch overhang. Once all of our pieces have been prepped, we can install them in the jig. Our jig is set up so that the right side is on one side, the left side is on the other. We are flush with the surface of the jig, so when we tack these together and pull them up, they will be mirror images of each other. I will be tacking my armrest assemblies in three locations on each side, and as I remove those, 
Each piece should be a mirror image of the other one. Once tacked, we can go ahead and weld all the way around. After welding, we will hit it real quick with the grinder and then come back with a flap disc. At this point, we have created our seat frame assembly. We have created our back rest assembly, and we have created our left armrest and right armrest assemblies. Beginning with our lumbar support brackets, we can begin connecting these assemblies together. Prior to installing our lumbar support bracket, we need to file down any sharp burrs that may have been caused by the drilling process. Our four lumbar support bracket pieces will be used to support the lumbar on both the seat rest and the back rest. After measuring the opening of my seat frame, I have identified it at 16 inches. Measuring the backrest opening, I have also identified that as 16 inches. To help with the spacing and layout of my lumber support brackets, I will be cutting three pieces of 5 quarter cedar decking to a length of 15 and 7 eighths inches. Placing my cedar boards in the seat frame will help me position my lumbar support bracket at the correct height. One of the issues that I run into is that my inside corner weld is hitting on my lumbar support bracket. I need to correct this so my bracket fits in the opening correctly. Using a metal file, I can bring down the corner just enough to clear that weld. Our lumbar support bracket should fit easily into the opening. With our backrest assembly, we want to perform the same operation. However, we need to orient our backrest correctly. And this is that our lumbar is flush against the table yet our slanted ends are facing up at us. This will ensure we are welding our lumbar support brackets in the correct position so that the lumbar will be facing outward on the bench when we assemble this together. With a little bit of filing, my lumbar support bracket should fit easily within the frame. To hold our lumbar support bracket in place, we will be applying three small tack welds at the location of each board. This will ensure that our lumbar support bracket remains at the correct location the entire length. After applying those tack welds for both of the lumbar support pieces, we can flip over our seat frame and double check that the lumber is at the correct height. If everything looks good and is lined up correctly, we can go through and apply a series of one inch welds along the length of the lumber support brackets. This will ensure a strong connection between those lumbar support bracket pieces and our seat frame. After installing our lumbar support bracket pieces on both the seat frame and the backrest, we can begin to dry fit our project together. The goal is that our backrest assembly is sitting at a 15 degree angle from our seat frame assembly. If I take a look at our original schematic and we focus on 
the connection point between our seat frame and our backrest, we want to have a 105 degree angle, which would be the same as tilting the backrest 15 degrees back from perfectly perpendicular. To ensure that I am at a 105 degree angle, I have created an angle gauge to help ensure the backrest is set correctly to the seat frame. As we do this, we also want to ensure that the outside edges are flush with each other. And when everything is lined up correctly, we can place a few tack welds to hold everything in place. Always double check and triple check to make sure that the angle has not shifted or moved on you while you're tack welding this together. When everything is exactly how we want it, we can go through the process of welding each of these assemblies together all the way around. For connecting our armrest assembly to our bench assembly, there are two key critical measurements and two key critical connection points. If we take a closer look at the seat frame assembly, we can see that there is a two inch overhang that we need to first identify on our bench assembly. By using chalk or soapstone, we can clearly identify that overhang measurement. My second critical measurement is the distance from the seat frame assembly to the armrest, the opening between these. This needs to be eight inches. Using two carpenter squares set to a distance of eight inches, I can use a piece of chalk to help me draw a square line. This will help give me an idea where our components will go. We can then take our arm rest assembly and place that on our chalk lines. Using a C-clamp, I can lightly clamp the front leg to the seat frame assembly. Using another C-clamp, I can lightly clamp the armrest to the back rest assembly. It is essential that we double check our critical eight inch measurement both towards the front leg and the rear of the project. This will create a 90 degree angle, which is a square perpendicular connection. We can verify that on our project by using a square. After we have double and triple checked that everything matches our schematic, we can weld each of these joints. Once welded, we can remove our C-clamps. If you are using plastic caps, as we are in this project, you do not want to weld our rearmost connection point. This will interfere with the installation of the cap. Rotating our bench around, we can set up for installation of the right side armrest assembly. Following the same procedures, I can use some carpenter squares to identify my weld point locations. I can place my arm rest assembly in position according to the lines that I have drawn. I can then install my C-clamps to hold everything in place. Double check all of my measurements to verify that they are accurate and correct. 
Using a square, I can triple check to make sure that everything is lined up. And lastly, weld each of the joints. While we let everything cool, we can start taking a look at the rear leg. Our rear leg is set to a 105 degree angle. This is 15 degrees off of 90. Taking a look at our schematic, we have 2 inch by 2 inch by 14 gauge material. It is a total length of 15 and a half inches long and each end is cut at a 75 degree angle which is again 15 degrees off of 90. Using the cold saw I can cut my first end to 75 degrees. Our goal is to make this piece a parallelogram so with our first side cut at 75 degrees if we slide our material down without rotating it, we will be cutting at the exact same 75 degree angle, thus giving us a parallelogram. Without rotating my material, I can slide that through, measure and mark it at 15 and a half inches, line up my material, and again, without rotating my material, make my second cut. Using a file, we can prep the edges for welding. By flipping the bench over upside down, we can get better access to placing these legs. We're going to be using that same 15 degree angle guide that we previously used for the back. This will help us make sure we are positioning the legs correctly. A couple tack welds in place will temporarily hold it until we can weld the entire rear leg. Alternating between legs and between welds will allow the first weld to cool down while you're welding on the opposite side. Now that all four assemblies are welded together and the rear legs are installed, we can flip it over and get a little better idea of what this project is looking like. At this point, everything is looking pretty good. I can install a few of the seat and backrest boards to get an idea of how everything will end up going together. Additionally, it will give me a chance to sit on the bench, which will help us gauge a measurement for the next step, which is to scribe the legs to a flat surface. Prior to setting our height, we want to make sure that all of our boards sit flush and look good. If there is an issue, we need to correct that at this stage before we move on. Additionally, we want to make sure all of our welded areas are complete and looking good aside from needing to clean them up a little bit. I have created a surface that is completely flat with no irregularities and set the bench up on that surface. If I take a look at the bottom of each foot on the bench, I notice that it does not sit parallel with my flat surface that I have created for this bench. This is the same for all of the four legs. At this point, we can begin to customize the height as well as a little bit of the angle of the bench. Using a chunk of 2x4, we can place that under the front leg of the bench, sit on the bench, and then see how that feels. We could also do that with the back of the bench. I personally like the tilt of the bench as it is, so I'm not going to change anything by way of how far it tips back or forward. Our goal, however, is to make each of the legs sit perfectly flat with our flat surface. 
To do this, I will be using a scrap chunk of metal and a black Sharpie. I can run the black Sharpie on top of the metal around each of the feet. This will scribe a line to the surface of my metal. We can then use a grinder with a cutting wheel to cut along each of our identified marks. This could also be done with a portable bandsaw or even a hacksaw. When finished, each of the four feet should sit perfectly flat on our flat surface. In total, we have 16 bench boards that are five quarter cedar decking, which measure five and a half inches wide by 16 inches long. Given that my opening of my bench seat and backrest is exactly 16 inches long, I have cut my bench boards to 15 and 7 eighths inches. This will give me about a 16th of an inch play on either end of the bench board as I install these on my bench. Before installing our bench boards, we need to ensure that they are sealed properly. As this bench will be outside, we need to protect the wood from the weather. Using a spar urethane finish, we can paint each of the bench boards on the top surface and the edges. We want to leave the ends and the back unfinished so that if moisture does get into the lumber, it can find its way out through the ends and the back of the boards. After the first coat, we will let it dry for 24 hours. In the meantime, we will shift our attention back over to our bench. Using a grinder with a wire wheel, we can clean up any of the debris or inconsistencies in our welds. This will help prep it for paint. Using mineral spirits, we will wipe down the entire project. I have chosen to use black enamel spray paint as the finish to coat the metal to prevent it from rusting. Back over to our boards, I like to apply three coats of spar urethane, waiting one day and sanding between each coat. After all of our boards have dried for 24 hours, we can install them onto our project. To install the boards, I'm first going to set them in place and space them evenly. We want to get an even spacing between each of the boards so it looks visually appealing. From the underneath side, I'm going to identify the location of each drill hole. After marking the location for the screws, label the front of each of the board so we know the sequence that the boards go back in. Then removing one board at a time, I'm going to drill a pilot hole, replace the board, and install screws in place. The same process will be done with the back rest boards. First lay them out, then come back and space them evenly. Mark the location of each hole. Pre-drill all of your hole locations. Reinstall all of your boards and screw them in place. After all of our boards have been installed, we can step back and do a visual inspection and make sure everything looks as it should. If anything looks unusual, now is the time to fix that before we finish the project. Located on both ends 
of both armrests and the bottom of all four feet, we have an open tube. To cover this up, we're going to be using plastic tube inserts. I have two inch by four inch plastic inserts for the armrests and two inch by two inch plastic inserts for the bottom of the feet. Using a rubber mallet or soft face hammer, we can gently tap these in place to install them. And at this point, our bench project is complete.